Yeah, they get more traction. They get no, not necessarily they get more traction. When you look at the analytics, most of their viewers are females. Females. All stereotypically. Um, are you are you sure? Yes. Because I see males also chase these female accounts. No, go and, no, go no, at, no, 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 go no. And look, go and look at that thing media on Instagram. No, what, what I'm saying is stereotypically feminine things. I'm not talking about Instagram models. Instagram models are are there to attract men, stereotypically. And realize that those people actually have a lot. Of, so far as they show more skin, they have a lot of. Max, welcome back to the South Talks Novels. Thank you very much. How's your week? It's been rough, but it's been good. It's been good. Yeah. Um, if you are listening to this, I, I'm guessing it's either Monday or someday in the week because the podcast episodes come out on Monday exactly. and the video episodes come out on what? Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the unison. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. So welcome back to the South Talks Novels. And this is the podcast show where we talk on technology for the experts and for the novices. I like. I like, yes. Yeah. Where um, together we come and share ideas on things that we may have knowledge on and things that we may also not have knowledge on mm. so that you could also chip in your expertise or your opinions. Yeah, so at the end of the day, we all learn more. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so um, not, to waste ma- not to waste much time. <laughs> he's, had a, he's had a bad week, apparently. <laughs> anyway, eh. Yes, not to waste much hey, hey. Not That's to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, okay, Maxwell is actually under a cold. Mm. Yes, he's not well. Yeah. Yes, so As I have a, a nasal kind of thing going right now. Yes, yeah. and I'm also under witchcraft. So I guess. That's just you every day, <laughs> but it's fine anyway. All right. So on today's episode, Maxwell, what are we talking about? Today we are, we, are, we are talking about algorithms and how they run the world and basically how to understand the usage that we can get more from any platform that you are using for business and whatsoever. I mean, we are at the age of influencers and how everything is being digitized. So I think it's best you have a fair idea about what really the ecosystem you are on yeah. works like. You get yeah. it? Yeah. So, yeah. so today I'm talking about algorithms, basically. And if there's time, we'll talk about AI. Yeah, I think we, we should have enough time. If you are, yeah. If, and also, to um, thanks to all those who gave us feedback on our first show. And honestly, that show wasn't scripted. We just freestyled. Freestyled. And with this one, most of it isn't scripted. We just have certain key points. That Apparently, we are finding it difficult to learn from our mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let, let's just get right to the topic. Mm. Max, what do you understand by algorithms? Algorithms. Um, if just to give a very casual outlook, algorithms. We're talking about algorithms. We're talking about how. Or a system that processes data in a particular way, like a framework okay. where you input information and it processes. That's my my basic understanding. But you could shed more light on that. Um, I think you you said it well. You said it. You said the right thing. And per the de- dictionary definition, yeah, it says an algorithm is a process or set of rules mm. to be followed in calculations or other problem solving operations, especially by a computer. By a computer, yes. okay. And bringing the technical part of it, algorithm, algorithms are basically... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> algorithms are basically steps or problem, or problem solution sets mm-hmm. taken by any microprocessor or any processor to give you a solution that you may have not gotten if you hadn't gone through those Problem steps. solution sets taken by... Every or any microprocessor. Not necessarily a microprocessor, a processor, a whether processor micro or macro. To get solutions. Yes, that okay. you wouldn't have normally gotten if you haven't gone through those steps. Right. So with algorithms, you move from A to B to C to answer. Okay, so algorithms basically have to do with method as well. Methods, yes. Okay, methods right, sure. of getting solutions. And with, uh, with, with the new age of tech, that line is currently being blurred with machine learning and artificial intelligence. So there's Where, a difference? I thought they were one in the same. No, machine learning is a way of AI. It's a type of AI. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I'm still learning it, so I don't want to shed more light and lie to you. I hate lying. So machine learning is a type of AI where it works with neural networks. It feeds neural networks info- with information so that whenever they see it in future, they're so, able to so make algorithm, decisions. So algorithms don't give it any kind of autonomy. 
they have algorithms, but then they are not set s- steps. Mm. The steps can change because when it sees A as this A, in future it may pass somewhere else to see that same A. Okay, so it, it's not fixed. It's like not fixed. How algorithms exactly. Are. Okay, exactly. So you realize that it changes the definition to just what a process of finding solutions. That does not sound simple at all. It doesn't sound simple, but then if you understand computer architecture, mm. you would understand that and systems, if, and, and if no you matter... You're basically doomed, isn't it? Yeah, you're yeah, basically doomed, let's be honest. You realize that um, computers that have been no designed... There is no way to encourage our novices. <laughs> anyway. No, I mean, after you listen to this show, they've gotten enough knowledge. Yes. Yeah, enough knowledge that's actually factual that you can check out and you know more about. Mm-hmm. Yes, back to what I was saying. Yeah. So you realize that um, computers yes. and systems have been designed basically from biological systems. So this, um, this week I was teaching some first years robotics yeah and i was explaining how the the human system works how we sense stimuli and this thing that happens is it impulse where whenever you touch something whenever you touch let's say fire you mean response to stimuli yeah you yeah. respond yeah your, your yeah. systems respond to stimuli yeah you realize that whenever your nerve cells touch fire a signal is quickly sent Whenever your sensory organs touch fire, a signal is quickly sent through your nerve cells and is processed by your brain as pain. Yes. And a signal is sent back down through your nerve cells to your limbs to so yeah. actually will retract yeah. your body from that pain. The effector. Exactly. You realize that even robots or machines are made, are made in such a way where there's an input, there's a connection to the processor, and then there's an output. Right. And for me, I believe um, algorithms are fundamentally structured that way where you feed it with some amount of information, it works through some processes, and it's actually giving you an answer. Now, moving on to the real-world uses. Social um, media. Exactly, because um, what we said earlier will just benefit some people who want to know the theory. Yes. But now, moving on to the real-world uses, we have um, different algorithms that run the social media platforms that we are using. Mm-hmm. And I, I, want to, I specifically want to talk about social media because... We deal with people who are within the ages of 18 to 24 in Ghana All right. and in Africa. So most of them do not really um, work with websites. And You said we deal. Yeah, as in our demographic, okay. our demographics. 18 to 24. 18 to, 18 to 24. Is that, and that's supposed to capture which kind of people? Basically young people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, young people between the ages of 18 to 24. They are what tech tech savvy or basically tech and capacity building um, oh, okay. in interested people. Okay, all right, yes, sure. all right, that's fine. Yeah, so most of you use social media platforms, and that's that would be the easiest way to actually talk about algorithms. You'd realize that let's take let's okay, I want to choose um, three platforms. I'll take Facebook. Facebook. I'll take Instagram. Instagram. And I'll take WhatsApp. WhatsApp. WhatsApp yes. uses al- algorithms. Yeah, WhatsApp uses an algorithm. Really? Yes. Uh, talk about that one first. Okay. Because I, I, I wouldn't really know. You wouldn't really know. Okay, so have you ever wondered how whenever you get a new message, it counts as the first? Okay. And, okay. It, and it automatically jumps down from where, up from wherever it is to the top. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a basic algorithm. That's a basic algorithm. Yes. Also, when so it's I, like chronological or what? Was it, well, no, tell me what was it? Was it I, I, logic? for WhatsApp? I don't really know what it is because something like Facebook is reverse cr- uh, chronological okay. and Instagram is chronological, but it shows you what you really want to see. Okay, yes. And WhatsApp, I can't really tell what it is. I don't know if you know it, um, leave it in the comment section or okay. you can send us um, a message on social media and we'll know what it is. All right, yes. But then basically, the problem set is that whenever you receive a message. The new message goes to the top. Go, unless you pin someone there. The new message goes to the top. If it's a what if it's a status, it goes to the top. And with the status, whenever someone views it, it automatically saves their their name and mm. shows you as part of the people who have viewed your status. Okay, that's all and algorithms. Those are all algor- okay. algorithms. All right. And it saves the number of people who have what watched it and gives you that okay you have about 28 people like analytics or something analytics it gives you yeah. back analytics that's okay. actually a very good way of giving you back analytics on 
the posts you've made. Right, right. Exactly. Now, something like Facebook. Facebook doesn't show you based on days. Or it doesn't show you based on what people have posted at certain hours. Okay. With Facebook, someone can post something on Thursday and you see it on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Just because they've made a reverse chronological where the days don't matter. It's posted as and when they feel you want to see. So as and when your friend group is actually well talking about what the person posted. But I noticed that in addition to uh, maybe who you message most fa- being factored to who you would likely want to see their content, mm-hmm. thereby that make uh, that informing whether it's going to be present there when you are when you need to see it. You know? Yes. Aside that, a lot more goes into it because let's say for example Instagram, people add hashtags to their pictures, yes. and that probably help helps with the categorization. Is that algorithm? Is that a way um, to guide the with, algorithm? With Instagram, where hashtags play a role is in the home and discovery. Mm. Sorry, it's in the discovery tab, not the home. Oh, okay, okay. The home is based on the people you follow. Okay, okay. All right. The people whose, whose accounts you subscribed to. That's what the home is based on. Okay. So with um with Facebook too, it's based on your friends and friends of your friends. Mm-hmm. So if let's say um I have let's just say Silas, who is our director of content, is my friend on Facebook, and you are Silas's friend on Facebook, and Silas and you comment on something on Silas's page, and I see it. It shows that oh Maxwell has commented. So next time I can be able to reply to what they are saying, even though we are not friends. If you post something and Silas comments and your post has been open to friends of friends, I can actually see it that what you have commented on Silas's picture. It's interesting on my um, on my home on my timeline. Sometimes uh, because we lack understanding about how these systems are set up to work, uh, it's a bit disturbing when, when you find the system is a bit too accurate for your liking especially when it comes to suggestions in yes. facebook it could shock you that it could suggest like 10 people that you actually do know and from facebook, class but you facebook, don't share any contact with yes facebook actually that goes more than that facebook also um has this thing where they check people in proximity to you yeah location based yes facebook actually tracks people so let's say if we are all within the same vicinity or proximity they're able to check that, oh, okay, this account and this account are close together. So let me suggest friends. Just that, like geotagging or what? Geotagging. Technically geotagging. Okay. Technically geotagging. So they're able to check that, but okay. That's almost invasive, isn't it's, it? Don't, it's, don't you find it invasive? It isn't. Why would you want to use my location to assume that I would want to, I'd want to know somebody? Like because how? you've seen the person around and probably in, in, in normal human sense, whenever I see someone around, You'd want to what? Really? You don't yeah, think you need make, my permission for that? The, permi- the permission I'm giving you is... Accept do you them. want No, not accept. Do you want to send the person a friend request? Add as friend. They're really? not forcing you to add as friend. It's just really? a suggestion. Well, Facebook is not exactly high when it comes to security uh, adherence. They, they faced a couple of... Well, of, of yes, attack. but then they have to meet their KPIs and they have to keep people on their platform. Hmm. So by linking... Facebook existed for linking people. Yeah. By linking people to each other, they meet their KPIs. Okay, okay. Perfect. Yeah, so Perfect. something like Instagram, in your home, you would see that it's, it's not reverse chron- chronological because it's based on what people have posted and it comes... Let's say if someone posts something at six... The next time someone posts something at seven, it comes after the six. But then, if someone posts something at six thirty, and you don't really watch the what the person does, or you are not really interested in what the person does normally, you may not see it. Mm. Sometimes they bring mm. it up, but normally you may not see it. Also, if you follow, let's say photography a lot, yeah, you, you know, a discovery, you end up being inundated with just photography. Photography, yeah, I mean, if it's food, if it's fashion, yeah. Or your, your discovery, it will be filled with all those. If it's adult content, your discovery, it will f- be filled with all those. And so, in such a way, and also to, it's not just what you are um, viewing, but what's your friends, the people you are following and also, are also viewing. So, if you actually see adult content in your discovery mm. and mm. you don't follow adult content, possibly your friends yes. or your follow, a couple of those you are following there. are actually what, following adult content. And that's how the algorithm works. Yeah. So the algorithm 
the algorithm actually tries to give you things that they think you'd want to what know but more about. But it's scary how they, the algorithm usually gets it right. And it's not scary. It's, it's based on um, behavior and um, user behavior. Mm. It's, it's, it's fundamental, fundamentally based on user behavior. If let's say I like a lot, I am viewing a lot of let's say for example if you if you go to your discovery and you tap a picture and you open that picture you realize that when you scroll down just similar pictures yes, exactly, pop up exactly and if you are if you stay there for more than 10 minutes automatically it means that you really want to know like you really like something like that it just like I, I find like it happening when I visit NBA pages for example exactly from slam from NBA games to let's say even finals and all that you see they've created that kind of that kind of videos there you find yourself sticking, and YouTube is like the worst corporate because it's not can, YouTube. It's, it's Facebook is the worst corporate. Really? Yes, with Facebook, if I'm YouTube to watch, can have me there for like hours. Facebook is even worse. If I'm to watch, I'm having to use Facebook Watch, and I'm watching a stand-up co- um, comic from Comedy Central. I end up watching twenty videos from Comedy Central because they're that good at knowing that exactly that's the kind of content exactly. You're and next time when I when I'm when I randomly take my phone and I see a Facebook video, it is a comedy. Ah. central video wow and the moment i change to something else it will start mixing it up and they mm. want to realize that okay for example if you spend less than a second on a video it means i don't like it but if you spend time watching the video especially to the end it means that well you like such content to, to keep you on the platform that is they problematic keep showing how problematic is it because i feel that you know they, they sometimes when they attempt to guess what the person wants. They yes. T- they t- and obviously they are business, they are profit focused. So they tend to focus, they, they tend to be, you know, more skewed towards serving too much of it. And if you are not the person who has any kind of restraint, you find yourself becoming an addict. And I think that's, that's wrong. But although you are saying it's you based know, on user behavior. You know impulse buying, right? I know impulse buying. It's impulse using. It's the same. It's the same well, impulse um, buying is not exactly a virtue, is it? It isn't. It is, Life can't afford to do it. Hmm. Well, what I'm saying is, it's it's sad for those who don't know how the system is worked up. Yeah. Because personally, I had a somewhat basic understanding of this, and it helped me to know that yo, if I keep this up, it probably won't bode well for my airtime or whatever. Mm. You get it. But some people don't even know. I know girls who just bundle and they just roll away, start watching wedding videos. It's, and quite, it's quite unfortunate. But then, for me, I believe... Uh, okay. and, Andy, I think you know what I'm talking about. Girls, they get hooked up on, t- on t- Instagram. They can watch telenovelas. Oh, God, it's terrible. And they don't know how their data gets finished. And for me, no, for me, I'm actually... Um, it looks like I'm in favor of, of what these um, social media platforms are doing because I run a website. And my main goal is to what? Reduce my bounce rate. And bounce rates and get actually, traffic, huh? Yes. Not um, for me, it's not necessarily bounce um traffic. Just um increase my bounce bounce rate. Um no, reduce my bounce rate. Bounce rate is the amount of time people spend on your on your uh, platform. So the lower your bounce rate, the more people will spend on your platform. The amount of time they spend on, on your, your platform. And you're saying the lower it is, it the lower it is. It means that they spend more time, and the higher it is, it means that the moment they come, they leave after watching what okay. you have. So literally, like nightclub bounce. Uh-huh. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, so, so for me, I try as much as possible to design the platform in such a way that engaging It's engaging, and also to whilst you are reading content, I push other content on you. Optimize. Yeah, that. yeah. It's optimized in that way, and yeah. it's, it's done intentionally. So if you if you visit that email that can realize that after. So that whilst I are reading some of the articles, there's an embedded statement within the yeah, article yeah, saying exactly. that and um, we should read more on a similar topic. Yeah. When you scroll down, there are articles there. On the right, the podcast is there yeah. with some similar articles and some things that we are exactly, doing. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, again, another corporate in this is the Google search app. Hey, yes. Don't try. Like, I, I mean, it's tailored almost everything I see there. Even random highlights because mm-hmm. if you are following US election issues or U.S. governors issues. You see almost everything from press release from the White House, what, everything that you know typically you'd what? you delve into. you delve into, yes. So it's, it's, it's problematic. At the same time, I think, well, you disagree is problematic, but I think that it doesn't really... For me, um, everything... It's not I've, good for the addict um, at all. Post Malone and say, too much pleasure is pain. Yeah. So... Too That's much, a line from his song, by the way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> too, much, too much of everything is bad. So as a user, I should learn all these tricks i use them a lot i use them 
Yeah, so she learned these tricks and try as much as possible not to fall prey to these things. I think the girls who are not exactly tech inclined should. Why the girls? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not limiting not it to techie. them. Oh. I'm not limiting them. But you see, you see. Um, let's be honest. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. We won't look at typical video consumption. Mm-hmm. That is unrestrained. It will go for the girls because we know some. I I I have a friend who's into this Korean kind of movies. Yeah. Rom- romance. Actually, f- females consume um, v- Korean mo- series a lot. Good. And one thing that I actually agree with you on this because um reading, looking at the analytics of influencers in this world, well, you realize that all f- all um all stereotypically. F- feminine content yeah they get more traction they get no not necessarily they get more traction when you look at the analytics most of their viewers are females females all stereotypically um are you are you sure yeah because i see males also chase these female accounts no go and, no go no, look no, at, no no go no, and look, no go and look at that media on instagram no what i'm saying is stereotypically feminine things i'm not talking about instagram models instagram models are are there to attract men stereotypically and realize that those people actually have a lot. Of, so far as they show more skin, they have a lot of what male um, visitors. Re- a lot of reactions. Yes, but then when they show less skin and they start showing, let's say, beauty products, you realize that their females are more than their males. But I'm telling you for um, for a fact. Fine, maybe your point is, is is actually very solid. No, not maybe. Actually, is. Yeah. But another 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 angle to it, to it is this: um, if you look at males, yeah, save those who put out irresponsible content or let's say the very good comedians. Yeah. If you look at males and you compare them to females who are doing basically the same thing, you won't have the same numbers. So if... Are you sure? Hey, don't, 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 don't argue this out. Yo, Andy, I think we need you G- give, give me an yeah, example. Andy, help, help out on this one. You see, um, if you look at um, typically those who streak, I'm sure you're familiar with those who streak. Yes. Those who streak a guy's numbers and a lady's numbers. Uh, let's look at a girl who did that Champions League thing. Um, uh, v- Vitaly's um, girlfriend. Girlfriend, yes. Vitaly's and girlfriend. do you know the number of times Vitaly has actually streaked? <laughs> no, no, no. And for just, this one time... Just, just get me. I'm just trying to tell you that the way... Uh, generally, people consume more what's female it, content. Once it, what, it because of what she was wearing? That Gen- caught a lot of people's general, eyes. That's all part. I said, generally, people... Why oh, don't you tell me that? That, take, that takes... That uh, flops my argument. That ruins my argument. The fact that she was showing skin. Yeah. <laughs> Let the guy show skin and see whether you get the same numbers. He wouldn't. He won't. That's my point. So it has never a level playing field for any of any any guy versus a girl in the social media world, where everything has to be objectified. The, even women chase objectified. Con- is this controversial? No, women women normally do not chase. Objectified. Oh, you would be surprised. Women. What do you think? Those bikini, average, these bikini uh, bikini models. You'd be surprised that women are actually following those accounts as well because they feel men are attracted to these things. That's the point. So, ob- but they are not. But not. They are not objectifying the females. You don't get it. I'm just saying in the in in the sphere of object objectification of any kind, whether men in swimsuits, men modeling, ladies modeling, it is not exactly a level playing field when it comes to traction that either of them get, and that's why. Point going back to your stereotype that you're saying that typically, stereotypically, who gets more attention? I'm saying it's, I'm saying it's, I'm saying it's ladies. But and anyway, you, anyway, that's fine. So you seem to disagree with the fact that I'm saying that it's not really a fair playing field. Yeah, but influences. you know that um, what all all that you've said is actually the human factor of algorithms. That's my whole point. I was never arguing along the actual algorithmic or whatever. Okay, so let me get an argument again. My argument is this. When it comes to content, it's never a fair playing field because guys are attracted to female content and women also equally patronize their own content as well as guys. So you can never have anyone, a guy racking the same numbers as a, as a lady. This is a caveat. This is just like segue into a different matter. This has nothing to do with Let's the take YouTubers, for instance. Yes. PewDiePie has... Oh. Over 100 million subs. No, 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 no. PewDiePie no, no, no. doesn't objectify anything. No, 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 no. Even no, no, if you no. look at the quality of his content. You see, I make a mistake. What, what mistake? I'm saying that if in the space of objectifying. Within, in that, just in, within the in space. In that space. We're talking okay. about skin here. Let's show it off. Okay. It's entirely different. <laughs> By my, you might disagree anyway. It's fine. 
Do, no, let's go back. No, I, not that I disagree. I do not agree. I feel I'm not getting my point. No, I'm not in the right position to talk about that. Right. Yes. Because um, it's quite it's quite a controversial area. Yes. When it comes to objectifying the opposite sex. Yeah, but but whether male to female or female to male. Well, the reason why I think we can speak about this thing in liberty is that. We are not really pitting ourselves for a side. We are just trying to analyze the whole thing as to what we observe in modern day uh, pop culture when it comes to social media. Yeah. When it comes to social media usage. Yeah. Social media usage. <laughs> whose, whose device was that? My mind is on flight mode. It's, it's <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, Maxwell, so we've, we've said a lot. So, what do you think the future? Yes, when it comes to algorithms, from where you stand? Well, well. Yeah. Well, the future of algorithms, I, I, I think um, it's probably going to evolve. And algorithms, as we've come to understand them, are, are to an extent going to have to be modified. You are saying that machine learning is like an advanced form of algorithms. No, AI. Sorry, AI is... It's a type of AI. It's a type of AI. AI is basically... Algorithms will just stay at, at a foundational level. I think I think they've done their job, but to get to a point where we need to process a lot faster, unless maybe that's a very, very dumb assessment. What do you think about that? Um, for me, um, this, this is what I think. I think um, algorithms will get way more smarter... With respect to the fact that... But what is the line drawn mm. when an algorithm gets so smart that it becomes autonomous, then it becomes AI? So now people are trying to draw le- legislation with mm. that. But then now the, the, the limit is limitless. In the sense that now people are embedding more sensors into mobile devices. Yes. That means you are increasing the power of mobile devices. And you are increasing... Mm the power of the fundamental algorithms that work within these mobile devices. Basically, I'm making them AI. Exactly. Fundamentally. Yes. Yes. And that's how powerful basic algorithms are going to be. Yeah. Yes. And we've been using the word algorithms too much. So that's the, that's fundamentally how devices are going to run. Where we are actually in the fourth industrial revolution, where we are trying to connect machine and man together. Yeah. And when in such... It's such a revolution. Don't you think that they are going to create more complex systems that will be able to integrate man and machine? True. Because now we have self-driving cars. We have the Tesla that you literally talk to. And right now, um, there's a new update for a Tesla where it can do karaoke. The center dashboard and display will display the words and the car will be playing the music in the back. I can see that you are a personal fan of Tesla and yes. Elon, and Elon Musk, but that's fine. Can okay, no, no, I, him, I, I, I do not worship Elon Musk like a lot of people do because I believe he's doing his part, but he's not perfect. But then he's done so much when it comes to com- commercialization of autonomous electrical vehicles. Yes, apparently it was just a prototype th- thing. Thing. Until recently, people have started bringing out yeah. electric vehicles, but none of them have a commercial autonomous electric vehicle. I think, I think I think Elon Musk's autonomous vehicles are not really commercial yet, are they? Because Every he, Tesla is autonomous. Every no, no, Tesla, no, no, no. You see, it's not, it's it's autonomous, but it's not allowed for commercial use. It's not allowed. He says it's going to roll out as robo t- taxis or something. Yes, but also for a Tesla, a Tesla is self-driving, yeah. and that's some level of autonomy. Yeah, and they have they currently have legislation that is against that because the world isn't yet there. Mm. So, like for a Tesla, I think after twenty minutes. No, is it 20 minutes or 10 minutes? I, I stand corrected. After some time, if you do not touch the steering wheel or you do not put pressure on the steering wheel... It takes over? It, it gives you an alarm that you should put pressure on the steering wheel so that it makes sure that you are awake. So that if there's any problem, the company is not held liable because they are still testing. Okay. Yeah. And I also... Yes, let me give you this advice. I gave my students this week. I like saying my students. It's oh, nice. Boy. I gave my students um, this advice this week that... When it comes to new technology, yeah. the white man is still f- is still figuring out how to implement them. So things like AI, things like machine learning, things like robotics, 3D printing, are all still in their research stages, and there's nothing concrete that's commercial yet. Mm. So whilst we are going through our, our schooling system, we should try and look at 
what is currently happening in the world. Try to study and understand, get a fundamental understanding and try to find our feet in these modern technologies. Okay. Or these okay. modern trends, no matter the industry you find yourself. If it's, let's say, um, you're, an, you're an accounting student, try as much as possible to use, to use accounting well, software. Well, I, I, see, I see in as much as that, that uh, school of thought does hold and I think it's, it's promising, it, it promises a future where people would want to take and you know, more or less uh, f- f- would want to front yeah. a technology more than just be consumers. The question mm-hmm. still remains. I keep last time I think we spoke about this that mm-hmm. you can never be a pay setter in an industry if you don't give priority to R and D. It's not happening here. No, you see, Maxwell, Maxwell, you, see, you are Maxwell. telling them that as we are going ahead, as we are going ahead, Maxwell, it's not happening here. It's happening elsewhere. You mm. can get opportunity to go to that elsewhere and do it. So why should they limit themselves to well, the possibilities of things happening in this I've country? I've always found it problematic. That no, look at like for example, where I work now, a year ago there was no office like that. Mm. Right now there's mm. an office like that. We are trying to implement new things. So they should try and think about the future and how they can make a change. Okay. So this is you inspiring them at an individual level, right? Yeah. No, at your level, is, uh, no, at but, your level uh, two, yes. at your level two, you've done some things. That didn't used to exist before you got there. Yeah. And you brought them into motion. Yeah. So I feel we should try as much as possible to know the modern trends mm-hmm. and try and well, implement these modern trends yes. and make the difference. We shouldn't look at the whole where what other people tell that oh they're oh, they school now, nah, oh we yeah, are now when your job be or you get if you don't understand well, you go to school, when you're done, you get a job. And life moves on. Well, that's that's how most of us were socialized. It took a lot before we broke convention and we thought outside the box. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So with a podcast like this, we help you break outside that box to try and as much as possible to find new solutions. It isn't easy. It's not easy. Like, at trust all. me, it's not easy. It's not easy. Hey, and also speaking of um, um, trying to break outside the box, remember um, during one of our tests, I think was it the first episode where I said um, I'm trying to learn Python. Yeah, you said, yeah, yeah, you suck at it now. You hope you figure it out, which yes. you know you will. Funny enough, I said I know I will, right? So I applied for a scholarship, a UDM, a Udacity scholarship from the is it African Leader Something that was implemented by the Egyptian president. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I yes. heard about it. I got, I, I got free apps launch or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I got, I got um, a scholarship to study AI programming with Python. AI programming. I, I, was that what I posted? It was a nano degree. Yeah, a nano degree in AI programming Python. And the nano degree costs like 600 US dollars. Really? Yes, and I got a full scholarship. So how, how long does that run? Um, it runs for three months. My final paper is in December. Mm. So you yes, started? I've started. So that's what I do on the side now. Mm, impressive. Yes. And I've, re- I've gone back to working on my autonomous mobile robots project too, which I put on hold because of a lot of things that were happening. Yeah, so you, you, you see what I said? Yeah. If you believe in something, try as much as possible to just try. It, like, the pieces will come together. Just start. Yes, because I remember I told Maxwell that I want to, I know I'll figure this thing out by all means. And funny enough, it's here. Remember when uh, we met in um, Cape Coast? I also said um, the podcast should be out by September. The you said next September. Yeah. And at that time, my equip- most of my equipments were in. Even until now, most of the equipments are not in. But then we've gotten something running. Just believe in yourself. Try to give yourself certain what, um, milestones that you have to meet. Eventually, everything like comes together. For me, that's what I believe in. Okay. Um, we still have quite a bit of the show left. So let's just jump back into that. We love that TED Talk or whatever that was. So let's jump back. To- so we are, we are still talking about uh, algorithms. And you said... What's a futuristic outlook? Where do we see it going to? And of course, since he's all, you know, tech, 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 uh, he jumped to where they're trying to immerse or trying to interface technology and man, which is where society is heading to it. Yeah, that's where society is heading to. But we missed the key point, which is uh, those, how, 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 understanding of these algorithms, how does that make business better? Or those who do business on these platforms, how does it make business better? So, when I say business, it could it, well it could mean exposure. Exposure actually equals money in the social media space. So in present day, a lot of Ghanaians or stu- uh, let's say individuals who 
are being exposed to this tech landscape don't have a fair idea of how they can really maximize the platforms. I mean, let's say uh, someone who's doing a podcast like him, um, he doesn't really know how. Let's say he doesn't really know how to make sure that his presence is felt on Facebook. He posts, is not getting a reaction that to his main website that he wants. He needs to have an understanding of the platform, for example. And how about the girl who's trying to run a business on campus, trying to increase her visibility on social media? She doesn't understand that she posts at the wrong hours and what have you. We really need to understand that these platforms run on certain rules, as the name algorithm suggests. And to get the most out of it, you need to have a well-rounded understanding, isn't it? Yes. So, that thing. <clears throat> let's say, typically, I know you're not a big fan of Instagram. Uh, Andy, are you a big fan of Instagram? Yeah. Do you get a lot of reactions on your posts? Sure. You do. So usually, what times and what have you? Because because sometimes it's very discouraging when you post. You put up a picture, and you're not getting the numbers you want. Yeah. And uh, you 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 are you're under the impression maybe your content is not good enough, but in actuality, it's not about your content. It's about maybe the time you posted it, or whether you didn't really maximize it by using hashtags to make it more visible. Yeah. Uh, You're a photographer, aren't you? Yes, I'm a photographer. Good. Yeah, and a practicing one or an established one. A practicing one. Okay. An established one. You have a page. Yes, I have a page. Okay. How's your page looking? Is it good? Uh, yes, it's good. Uh, How your numbers? Uh, like two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. That's that's an individual account, isn't it? Okay, my individual account uh, account is uh, a thousand two. Oh, really? Yes, thousand two. Nice. And your business account is my business account is two thousand. Two thousand. Impressive. Yeah. How did you arrive by those numbers? Uh, I follow people. You follow. And do I, you put up posts? Yes, I put up posts. As you already said, um, me posting my content at the right time. At the right time. Yes. And I'm told weekends are typically the times that you can get a lot of traffic. Is it true? Um, and yes. Let's say holidays. Um, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. And Sunday. Sunday. And Monday around uh, one. Around one. Yes, because Monday is so... Um, in traffic, people... In really, traffic. And yeah. you go to lunch and you want to have a feel. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so, so you see, it's very much clear. Yes. You see, it's very much clear that it's a combination of an understanding of human behavior and algorithm that helps you maximize. Isn't it that Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, it's not just about yeah, knowing what really forms the foundation of the platform, but really, because Dati can put, Dati can shoot some very nice videos and he puts it up on his, I'm sorry, pictures and he puts it up on his Instagram and I go and see the reactions and it's not enough, but this boy doesn't care because he obviously care. posts it at any bloody time. This is, a, this is an example of someone who does not want to make the most out of the platform. That's his fault. Anyway. For me, I believe um, and if someone wants to see it, they'll see it. So don't um, don't try and well, it's all about your get angle. more people. What, what's, so. what, what's your end game? My end game is to post it because I want to post uh-huh. it. Not what's, because I what, want... Andy, what's your, Andy, what's your end game? Just, just it, just it. Okay, so my end game is to get more reaction. Good. So someone like Andy will probably be more adherent to the rules that bind the whole system. And my end but game... But that, that, that doesn't care, does it? Yeah, my end game is to just post it there because I, I feel I, I want it up. Right, right. Yes. So if, if I see two people view my content and I'm sick, like... <laughs> you are sick. For, ah. me, for me, I'm indifferent. Yeah. It's like a drug. He needs that. You need their views. It's, yeah. It's similar to WhatsApp me personally, WhatsApp, I've, I've turned off my state, my viewers. I don't want to know the. Wow. I don't understand. The I don't know. You see, you see, for it's all about making sure that you reduce the number of distractions because the platform is such that you've I've seen it graduate from a platform that ordinarily was just for messaging to something that's engaging you and keeping you there. Yeah. Already, the status feature is one hell of a feature that ha- has almost tripled my usage of WhatsApp, and I think that's. That's that's for me. I just know I just post a status that is, is there you. and le- I leave. That is you. And sometimes you. I go and come up to 24 hours, I see people's response, I respond to it. Ha ha ha. We move on. I know, I know, I know for, because I could laugh and it could take one week for him to laugh back. <laughs> that's how bad it is. Uh, so so uh, I try I try to cut down any form of engage extra engagement. So that's me, by the way. But like mm. he's saying, he needs his reactions, and that could be one of the reasons why some people some people actually make money from their Instagram. Yeah, some people seek to make money, but they are not getting the the feedback they want. Okay, so, um, so for yeah. me, it's obvious 
if you are listening or watching that, I didn't. My aim is not to get a lot of um, reactions. But I said digital marketing. Looking, obviously, you're not part of that. Yes, so, yeah. but looking at um, looking from the technical perspective. Yes. Um, I think I should talk from the technical perspective. How you can make use of these algorithms. One, um, you should use a lot of hashtags, no matter the platform you are working with. Exactly. Hashtags sort of are sort of like um, they are tags. Let's say if you they help you show up in searches. Yes, like for example, if you are attending a program, they give all of you tags. So if anybody around randomly sees you, the person knows that what you are related to that program. Yeah. And that's how hashtags work. Exactly. So that when anybody clicks on that hashtag, your feed pops up. And no matter what you do, take note that good content is skin. Right. Good right, content. Right. He's SK. an advocate for that, apparently. Yes, good content. Should SK. I mention that you don't agree with some some of Ghana's influences? Should I mention who in particular? No, we can't say that here. Right, you yes. can't say that. But good mm. content is king. You don't just throw trash mm. out and expect it to get um, good traction. If you want, sometimes to be, you you will get good traction. You will get good traction, but it wouldn't be constant. Yes, it wouldn't be constant. And right now, we one thing I've realized is that. Um, con- content like what we are doing right now may not get up as much traction as content that makes people laugh or content that actually doesn't make ordinary sense. Yeah. Yes. So that's one thing I've also realized. And also, to another thing you should do that you should understand the platform you are working with. Okay. Facebook is for people who can purchase certain things and people who are within a certain age and societal class. Yeah. The Twitter, millennials. Yeah. And even um, the baby boomers and others. Now, yeah, baby yeah, boomers yeah. are very active on Facebook yeah. because most of them are retiring and all. I've yeah. retired and all. Yeah. And we also have Twitter, which is for the very young working class. Yeah. We have Snapchat, which is for normally for teenagers and very young people who want Z. to keep this very private. Yeah. Instagram and Pinterest are for pictures. Pinterest, if you are someone who whose content is tailored towards mothers, you will do so well because I've even seen in Ghana, I've seen mothers who have Pinterest a yeah. lot. Uh, pin, pin, Pinterest is, I, mean, I think it's all about fashion. Fashion, is, is, pictures, aesthetics. Aesthetics, exactly. Yeah. Especially baby clothes. Baby one. clothes, um, interior design. Exactly. Um, kitchen. Events. Um, events. events Concepts. Exactly. Whatever. Anything that I looks pe- I personally turned off. I, I deleted Pinterest because... It was really guzzling my data. Hey, it was I, I don't I don't I don't use it. I think I have the app. I think I should have the app, but then because I'm naturally not. I went on Reddit for a while, mm-hmm. and I, I was I, I, the architecture of the app is a bit no, off putting. Reddit is supposed to be for the technical guy who it, cares mm-hmm. more about content than how it looks. Wow, then uh, they did a good job uh, about how it looks because you do, you obviously don't get turned yeah, on by what's there. I went to it's, it's more about reading because you yeah, can Reddit actually, is almost all about reading. You can actually go through a subreddit, go through, go through, go through, go through another one inside, go just, through, go through, but just I realize collapses. Then you are like exactly like, you are like 40, 40 layers deep. That's annoying. It's nice. That, that's the that's whole oh, thing. That's and also, to um, Reddit is Reddit is like a social media. Um, what what do they call these question and answer sites, uh, like Quora and all those things? They have a name for those communities. Really? Yes, as like Quora. Yeah, and, and Quora. Yeah, and all those things. They have those communities. I forgot the name. I think question and answers or something. Okay. But those Q and A communities. That's how Reddit is. So someone asks a question. Do you know these AMAs? Ask me anything. Where they bring um, established people, like let's say they will take someone like Bill Gates, and Bill Gates will run an AMA. Where you can anonymously anonymously ask Bill Gates any question, mm. such a thing is very fun because. But I noticed I read it when I went to when I, I was on it. I wound up in some very dark corners where racial slurs and what have you was almost all over the place. Yeah, because they are all being anonymous. Yeah, and I, obviously I, I needed an out on that one, but I still have the account though. You have subreddits on ads, subreddits on signs. Yeah. So, like so politics. many politics, anything yeah. you want. Yeah. I do you know the founder, I think the co founder or founder of Reddit is Serena Williams' husband, Alexis uh, Ohanian. Really? Yes. Oh, right. Yes. He's mm. Armenian. He's Armenian? Yes. Immigrant. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. So, Maxwell, and what else do we have to cover? 
Yeah, so like you said, use hashtags. Make sure that you put your business out there as identify with a certain group of people. Understand the working class or the demographic that really use that platform that way you can know that your business will appeal to them or not. So these are the mm-hmm. key areas when it comes to digital marketing. And I, I, we won't talk about the aesthetics. Probably another time where you have to know that you have to put put out really good graphics. I think for, for, for that, and we have to get a design guy. Yeah, get a design guy yeah, because, because there are principles that guide that. Yes. It? Yeah, yeah okay. because I'm, I'm far from, I'm more of a technical person. Yeah, I'm yes. naturally tailored towards technical stuff. Exactly. For me, what comes for me, what comes to mind when we talk about AI? Fundamentally, AI is artificial intelligence. So intelligence that is man-made. Fundamentally, no matter the form, whether soft or hardware. There is this belief. I, I, you see, I, I've been reading around and I've been watching a lot of documentaries, usually the conspiracy theories. That I think Steve Hawking, was well, Steve Hawking, he has a very gloomy. He had, R.I.P. He had a very gloomy outlook on uh, artificial intelligence. He says. Apparently, eventually, man will become inferior to artificial intelligence. And when we find ourselves immersed in artificial intelligence, it will take over us since our thinking will become inferior. Do, Do you, you believe know, in that? No. Do you know um, Do you know when machines started, people literally protested that they shouldn't use machines in factories because it will take out people's jobs and people become jobless. Mm. But I realize that the adoption of technology in those days rather redefined roles and made work more efficient. So basically, you're trying to tell me that you don't believe in Steve Hawkins. I disagree with him. With uh, that's a saying. lot of Nobel Prizes you're trying to... It doesn't mean he's always accurate. Mm. Because you have, you have um, someone like Elon Musk will tell you that he believes machines become very intelligent but then the people who are creating these machines have their singular responsibility to define their limits so is there a question that you we all agree but we don't want to say it out loud that machines will overtake us in intelligence because i don't believe that because in as much as machines if they are given autonomous power can work out certain things and come out with their own let's say solutions for because I even saw um, one of the Google Labs run uh, a certain model. They they raced a certain NASCAR and was able to feed in like hexabytes of data and came out with a model that brought a framework where the car would be more or less impervious Aero- to any kind of shocks. Yes, an aerodynamic. Yeah, very, very aerodynamic. So it brought out like a super NASCAR. And it did that on its own, no human intervention. But yet again, I said I always feel that AI will always be limited by its creators. Do you believe in that? Yes, because they have the responsibility of limiting it. No, it's not. It's not limited as in like regulation limited. Though. Then, like they we, it can only think as far as people can think. Do you disagree? I disagree. So because AI can actually outpace us. We have machine learning, which I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. where we are given machines enough knowledge to make decisions on their own. Mm. And right now, people are gradually feeding neural networks. So if you have a collection of different neural networks on different things, you realize that you end up getting machines that are can literally make take decisions on their own after from the press of a button. Well what I don't fear is well, what I what I don't fear is AI. What I fear is quantum computing because I've I've heard about what really the prospects are and it's scary. That we're talking as about compared to AI, because um, AI because will be quantum, run, run on quantum yes, computers. Yes, quantum computing is basically the foundation that will really push everything. Because Charlie, talking about computers running simultaneously. No, but do you know steam engines? Whether you are referring to quantum computing, it's the same way people in the early eight in the early eighties and stuff mm. were talking about steam engines. I think in the 18, yeah, in the 1800s, we're talking mm. about steam engines when they first came. It's the same thing. Technology so, changes. Mm. So it's either you embrace it and try to learn how it works and roll with the flow, or you are eaten up. Well, well, everything has to, everything has to uh, peak at a certain point. And there was something they called a singularity, where they said machine learning would, would attain a certain form of intelligence yes. that cannot go beyond. Yes. If you say there's a system that can actually learn on its own and get smarter and smarter and smarter. Yeah. 
it all points to the fact that it can exceed the limits of the human mind. Mm-hmm. But then, in theory, you are saying that it's so, it will also, even as, in, in as much as it will be artificial, it will get to a certain point that this system would have to succumb to its own limitations. But you are in no position to determine its limitations. The human being, I believe, has infinitesimal intelligence. Mm. So we are now trying to understand our human intelligence and try to re- we are trying to replicate that human intelligence in machines. So meaning the goal is to actually what? Either get to us or surpass ours. Since as human beings, we are able, we are given the gift of what? Doing things that may go beyond our imagination. So th- uh, for me, ultimately, that should be the goal. Trying to get very smart systems that can think on the same scale as human beings. That the facts are facts. If we are not careful, they are saying that if we are going to tell a system that it should think of smarter solutions for us, what if it gets to a certain point that the system tells you that the only solution to this problem is by getting getting rid of you? Do you get what I'm saying? Because they are saying that they want Don't to use AI, AI projections to try and combat climate change. If you push for such a system to take over something so fundamental to, uh, uh, let's say, um, the, no, so fundamental to, let's say, humanity, whether I will be able to self-preserve. And the system realizes that you are the root cause of the problem. They are giving so much power to AI. AI will say that the only, the only solution to preserving the earth is actually to get rid of human beings. And you've given AI so much power. That's one argument someone is making that AI can actually say that at a certain point, if we don't regulate it, at a certain point, maybe human beings are the cause of all the problems to wipe us out. So you give it too much power. If AI is, we're talking about um, neural networks all over. You shouldn't have been thinking about the whole... You see, you see we I'm, I, I started by talking about conspiracy theory. I can't remember, yes. We create apocalyptic conspiracies based on our fears. It comes back to the whole point where um, engines or machines started. People thought they'll wipe out jobs. People will lose their families and all. But then if there's good regulation and the people who create these systems are able to know that these systems are there to help, everything will be fine. If a bad guy hooks, join, I mean, you give AI so much power and AI goes haywire, the consequences won't be more grave compared to a steam engine that obviously was passing by your house and wasn't ramming through your building. You That's haven't totally gotten different. there. You do not know yet. No, you are, we, we are we speaking are, based on projections and I'm trying that to tell the you. same people in those times try to make. We are supposed to make sure that we keep our civilization. Go and tell Kim Jong-un that. No, it's possible. It's, it's, uh, no, it's, it's our singular responsibility uh-huh. to keep our civilization. Yeah. What that means is that these Somebody machines are Andrews. supposed to be our helpers. Yeah. Not like, for example, um, you realize competing. that um, when you look at the when you look at the evolution of dogs, they were once wolves and they were just domesticated. Domesticated, domesticated, domesticated. Now they are poodles and yes, exactly. Yeah. It won't shock you if, if after twenty years dogs will become vegetarian. Yeah, it shouldn't shock you. Right now they are omnivores, mm. but wolves are are, fun, are primarily carnivores. Mm. That's how I feel these things should be. We should try and say that okay, we want. These okay, systems. so he he is pro AI, pro technology, pro everything, and I'm not anti, but. I'm just saying we should proceed with caution. That's my, my position. That will always be my position. But hey, that's just that, that. This is a conversation for another day. All right. So thank you so much for being a part of today's conversation. I think we are not done with the conversation. We'll continue. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> in the next episode, mm, yes, next I think week. Struck a nerve. Yes, next week we'll continue this. Next week we talk about AI and how it's going to drive the world and its dangers, which a lot of people disagree be, I think with. It should be a debate. Mm. Yes. It should okay. Be. Tomorrow, ne- ne- next week or next edition, we will have pro AI, pro AI, pro anti- and anti AI. All right. Yes, because for me, I believe um, when it comes to f- the future and tech, there's so much we can do, and there's so much we should do. We shouldn't try and shy away from these things because I know people who are doing wonderful things in Stambe, Ghana, mm. using neural networks mm. and simple machine learning algorithms. Mm. And if we keep saying, oh, media... No, no. Machine dirty, learning. Dirty, dirty, dirty. I was never saying that fundamentally we should not develop the tech or we should not jump aboard. I support the idea of using AI for diagnosis, telemedicine, what have you. AI 
has the, the the potential to explode when it is not regulated because it is it is it is going at such an astronomical rate that it is beating regulation and we all know that a lot of Policymakers have no idea how they even would quantify the technology. Talk I, much I, more draft I, regulations I, I, I for it. We'll, we'll, we'll catch on. Yeah, yeah, we are talking about. Yeah, exactly. Now, now talking about. Yeah, we'll catch on regulations. Yeah, we'll catch on with time because um, right now, people can actually three D print guns, and there's this lawyer working who, guns. Yeah, working guns, and right now there's a regulation that's against that. Like not directly. Just 3D printing. Yes. They are picking it so off. What, it's supposed to be broad. What, 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 what he has done to bypass the law is that you can manufacture parts. You can fabricate parts. So now, instead of um, putting the whole blueprint online, it's just a part. And So you the, can actually send a blueprint of a gun to someone and he has a printer who print the gun. In the office, I said I was printing something today. So I'm working on an autonomous mobile robot project. You better not print a gun. And... I was I needed to print um a casing for a driver I'm using because whenever you put a driver flat onto the bed, because the bed is hard, the soldering pins come together, which can short circuit things, which can spoil your circuit. So then I printed a case so that it will hang the soldering um tips. I printed it from the internet. Like I needed it instead of going to buy it, I just printed it in the lab. That's how good technology is, is becoming. That's how unhinged technology is. It's not unhinged. It, that, that, that points to the fact people are making guns. Yes. Yeah, so someone, like, se- someone could send you a blueprint of a Magnum 5 and you could print it right here in Ghana instead of going through the hassle of ports and what have you. And you're trying to tell me that that does not demand regulation. That should not be checked. It demands regulation. But so that's what I've been advocating no, so, so for. I'm not anti-technology. Yes. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that it's going to happen. It's possible. Right. But then regulations are going to eventually catch up t- to help limit... And that is for another edition of that. Image. To help limit yes. what these people are going to do with respect the to... The proliferation exactly. of unhinged technology, the dangers. Exactly. Yes. So, for me, we shouldn't shy away from the topic or try to... Probably because he's printing a gun as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't shy away from the topic or try to oh, yeah, we are alienate sure. ourselves because I feel Africa has a lot of minds who can help solve the world's problems oh, by me. looking at our problems first. Yeah. 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 So, so there's so much technology can do to help us. And the good thing is that we are here to help you too and start the conversation. Exactly. Yes. So, so if you like this podcast episode, don't forget to give us a review. A review. Yes. Yes. And leave your comments, send us a uh, messages, send us questions. On, I think there, there's supposed to be a question segment, but we haven't yet got any questions. So the question segment isn't going to be run until we get some questions. Yeah, when right. we start getting questions, we yes. will run that. And we so, start getting sponsors as well. We'll probably be more dandy, yes. dressed better. If you have any questions, just send us a message on our social media platforms, which is Dati Media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or send us a message to info at datamedia.com. And we would actually feature your questions and we'll try and yep. find the solutions for you. Mm-hmm. And another thing to do is I keep sharing our podcast because we need it to go out. If you found anything interesting, Let's drive our numbers up. Yes, yeah, share the share this episode with your friend. Max, mm. any last words? Yeah, so today has been an exciting edition. We hope that you're able to gather something. And like we said, the point of this podcast is not to always be churning out facts on facts is to begin a conversation touch points yeah. and basically ra- raise awareness about the stuff that we otherwise won't talk about in technology so yeah so that's what we have for you this week hoping for the next edition all right so it's bye from me all right goodbye <laughs>